Hey guys, Cannon here with Free Tours by Foot Washington DC and I am in Georgetown. Now Georgetown is probably not named after who y'all are thinking. You're thinking George Clooney, right? Because that's who I'd name a town after. If you know who Georgetown is named after or you have a guess, let us know in the comment section below. So Georgetown is a beautiful neighborhood with tons of history. We have three walking tours of Georgetown and it doesn't cover everything. So today I am staying on the eastern side of the neighborhood to tell you a little bit about the sites that we don't get to see on our regular walking tour. We really appreciate your support over this past year and the best way to support tour guides here in DC is by liking and sharing this video, subscribing to our channel, finding us on social media, and when you're ready to come visit Washington DC, look up DC by foot and come join us on a tour. All right, let's get started. So we haven't actually left so we haven't actually left Washington DC, but it does kind of feel like we are in a different neighborhood. Uh, this was founded in 1751 as the town of George, Georgetown today. We're gonna spend this walk with me video kind of north of M Street, the main commercial street here in Georgetown. And we'll be seeing a lot of a neighborhood that was actually later parts of, uh, of the town of George. Make sure you are subscribed to our channel because eventually uh, I'll be back down here to walk around the waterfront and the more industrial section of Georgetown. Bye. So we'll go more into the history of Georgetown on that video. So we'll go. Mother, mother, she's following you. Also, a lot of normal people with dogs, as you can see. Sketch, we're inviting Brody, and they're like, okay. So, Georgetown is known for its more wealthy, more well known, more historically famous residents. Uh, and we love this little house kind of off the beaten path we're on olive street and we're about to reach really the far east end of georgetown so this house at 2706 olive it's kind of the color of butter uh, which is very fitting for its owner or previous owner this was the home of julia child and her husband paul Though they purchased the house in 1948, it wasn't until they moved back after times overseas that they really lived here. While in France, Julia had taken cooking classes, and it was at this house that she began to put those skills to use. She hosted cooking classes for neighborhood ladies, including the likes of Catherine Graham. Now, husbands were allowed to sample the dishes on two conditions. They could make no complaints and they had to clear their plates. In 1959, the couple moved to Cambridge, Massachusetts, uh, which I butchered saying, Massachusetts. Uh, and the famous stove that she had installed in the kitchen, it was moved with them. But now you can actually see that stove uh, downtown at the American History Museum. So aside for its famous resident, this house has its own unique story. It was built in 1870 by a black American carpenter named Edgar Murphy. This being shortly after the American Civil War, it was unusual that he would have had the funds to build a four bedroom house. But this Eastern half of Georgetown, which is 
colloquially known as Herring Hill due to, due to the number of herring in Rock Creek. A prominent black American neighborhood, many of the homes were built around this time and the neighborhood really grew into a thriving black American community. Now the house is currently being restored and if you would like to follow along, uh, you can follow along Julia Child's Little Jewel on Facebook and on Instagram. I think that they're working on it right now. The peek in the window. But this house has been the color of butter since I have been a tour guide for over a decade. So we are going to continue on after this car comes. Now Rock Creek Parkway is just on the other side of this fence, uh, which would have been where Rock Creek was. So today Georgetown is an historic district. Uh, so there are rules on what you can and cannot do to your house um, based on what's visible from the street. Interesting. But the idea of a historic district is really to kind of make you feel like you've gone back into time as you're walking through. Keep the historic character of the houses and the yards, the neighborhood as a whole. Blossom trees. So I'm filming this at the very beginning of April. We're past peak bloom of the cherry blossoms, but there are still many of them around the, ne the, the city as a whole. And when I say past peak, peak bloom, I mean past peak bloom of the Yoshino cherry blossom trees, which is the more famous ones. They're the ones all around the tidal basin. Uh, we have a whole virtual tool, tour, um, both of the tidal basin and the arboretum and walking through the cherry blossoms in the rain. Uh, if you are interested in more about the cherry blossoms of DC, uh, those videos should be popping up right now. So being an historic neighborhood, uh, 
you know, not every building is historic. Some of them are modern. And when this house was built in 1949, it really left the neighbors of Georgetown aghast. Really bucked the tradition of copying more historic styles with flat fronts and triangle but pediment, kind of American motifs. So Joseph Alsop, the famous columnist, he decided to try his hand at architecture. It's actually a lot larger than it looks. Uh, there's at least six bedrooms, five baths, a swimming pool, and a luxurious garden. Uh, and this house is often included on those home and garden tours here in Georgetown. The Alsops were kind of Georgetown royalty. They hosted lavish parties, salons at the home. Uh, JFK retired here um, after his 1961 inauguration. He needed a nightcap. Uh, there is um, competing stories on whether that was a bowl of soup, a glass of champagne, or a secret liaison with Angie Dickinson. Really depends who you ask which story is right. Alsop was a writer and a columnist. He was famous for his thrice weekly piece called Matter of Fact. Now we are gonna backtrack. Oh, that's a cute little house. We're gonna backtrack to the corner. Uh, there was a big red church on the corner. We'll go see up close. It's the first Baptist church of Georgetown. Now when Reverend Sandy Alexander, who was a former enslaved person, he arrived in Georgetown in 1856, he found that there were only two Baptists um, but eventually the congregation grew and in 1882 the cornerstone of the red church on the corner was laid the foundations were dug oh six o'clock on the dot So the foundations of the church were dug by church members themselves. They did it throughout the night. And when the receipt was written after making the first loan payment, it was addressed to the first African Baptist church. Uh, the trustees refused to accept this for they were indeed the first Baptist church in Georgetown, race aside. As Georgetown has grown and developed over the years, many of the older families have been forced out with higher land value and rents. Uh, and this can be seen with the many churches in the neighborhood. Many of the congregation of these churches no longer live nearby and they commute in on Sunday mornings. So this is Rose Park. It was designated as a recreation area on donated land in 1918. It was used by members of the community really regardless of race until 1945. And a sign was posted that read for colored use only. Now that sign lasted about a day. 
residents of the neighborhood, both white and black, protested the designation and really just ignored it. The city would eventually acknowledge and claim that DC had one of the first integrated parks, uh, but it was never actually the city's doing, it was the people who lived here. Now there are some tennis courts over here and they've really seen their fair, fair share of integrated games as well. In the 1940s, you may have seen a game between a handsome white serviceman who was stationed nearby um, playing against two local black sisters who lived nearby. Uh, so it was Gene Kelly, actor and dancer for films such as An American in Paris, Anchors Away, Singing in the Rain uh, in the 1940s and 50s. And he often practiced tennis here with the Peters sisters, Margaret and Rumania Peters. They might not have the name recognition of Gene Kelly uh, to today's audience, but these two women were really the original Williams sisters. Uh, they had a house nearby, which we will go see next. So there's also a little pop-up market here. I guess nobody's playing tennis today. So the Peter sisters lived in the third house, the white house with the black shutters between the two red brick houses. Nicknamed Pete and Repeat, the Peter sisters were tennis greats in a time when women and black Americans really were not welcomed in the sport. The tennis courts we walked past um, when the 1930s, they were sand and rock and dirt and they really needed to be cleared by hand and relined before you could start a game. The sisters competed in American Tennis Association, which was created to give black Americans a chance to play and compete in an era when they were not allowed to compete against white American players. As amateurs, the sisters had to provide their own equipment and transportation. In the 1930s through the 50s, the Peter sisters set records with doubles performances, but they would also earn degrees in physical education from Tuskegee University and later master's degrees and they would both teach. Now you may have heard the name Althea Gibson. She won straight titles from 1947 to 1956 and she was the first black American to compete in integrated tennis. She lost in 1946 to Romania Peters, uh, really who was the only black American woman to ever beat Gibson. Now we're walking up 27th Street Northwest 
uh, this block really has some of the best photographic angles for these multicolored row houses. So Georgetown is often known for, you know, it's grand houses, which we will see shortly more on the Western part. Cross the street real quick, but there are plenty of little houses as well. So this right here is the smallest house in Georgetown. It's eight feet wide and it's called a spite house. So these are very popular up and down the East coast. They're often joked that they were built to block the view of a neighbor um, or like block the fresh air, the sunlight's not often true. This house wasn't actually built out of spite. In the 1870s, it was an extension of the house to the right. You can see that the cornices overlap up there at the top. While this is the smallest house in Georgetown, it's not the smallest house in the DMV. That goes over, that title goes to a house in Alexandria. We're gonna do another walkthrough of Old Town Alexandria, similar to this one in the coming weeks. So this fence here on the corner may seem rather typical for this area uh, with iron foundries just a few blocks down the river there are many wrought iron additions to homes but this fence is supposedly different so the owner of this home in the early 1800s was a man named reuben dawes he had lent the government money during the war of 1812 and when they couldn't repay him they offered him and others 
free reign of the Navy Yard to really take what they wanted in the way of castings. He found a pile of old British muskets, which were said to be surrendered during the Revolutionary War, and he turned them in to a fence. So if you look closely, you'll notice So if you look closely, you'll notice that the points are inserts. And some of the barrels still have their old sights. Oh, I don't see any right now. Now, if you look across the street, 2808. I'll get a better view for you. This was the house that uh, JFK lived in in 1957. Between JFK and Jackie, they lived in seven different homes here in Georgetown. Uh, we cover them on every one of our Georgetown walking tours. So if you want more history about the Kennedys here in Georgetown, uh, be sure to tag along on one of those. Now, if you do come to Georgetown in person sometime, on a tour or not, please stop by uh, Stokowski's because it's a deli that has just amazing sandwiches. They're massive, far bigger than any one person could eat. Now, normally when you think about Georgetown having an international feel to it, it's more the residents of the neighborhood. Ooh, have a little peek in the garden. You know, people who have jobs all over the world, but sometimes they bring it back with them. So this is one of the more unique homes here in Georgetown. So on the left, there is a quaint cottage-like home, and it's really one of the few remaining wooden structures in Georgetown. Standalone wooden homes in the area were built before 1871. Really, after the Great Chicago Fire, it was decided that it was not wise to build wooden homes in dense urban areas. So this particular house was built in 1846. So the process to date such a house, it's very interesting. Um, so by 1846, this particular lot in Georgetown, it had a dwelling. And it cannot be older than 1843 because a Mr. Bennett Clements had a right to remove crops from this lot. So we can only surmise that the house was built between 1843 and 1846. Now this house, was built by Benjamin Miller, who was a master carpenter and superintendent of the Potomac Aqueduct nearby. Now this is a Dodge house. It's actually the second Dodge house. And there's another one on another corner we'll see momentarily. So this belonged to Robert Dodge. He was an engineer on the Chesapeake and Ohio, the CNO Canal. And he was a founding member of the Georgetown Gaslight Company, an owner of the Columbia Flour Mill, and a paymaster in the Union Army. So de despite his family's loss in the shipping business, he really had his hands in many ventures. Uh, so he remained financially stable, really throughout his whole life.
So across the street is a house with a yellow door. For years, this was the home of Marvin Hamlish. He's an American composer and one of the few people to earn an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony, commonly called an EGOT, though he also earned a Pulitzer Prize. He wrote the scores for The Sting, The Way We Were, Nobody Does It Better, uh, For The Spy Who Loved Me, A Chorus Line, and the opening credits for Good Morning America. When he was living in Georgetown, he was, When he was living in Georgetown, he was the National Symphony Orchestra Pops conductor. And the story is he decided to give up his Georgetown residence so he could live in a hotel where he could get an ice cold Coca-Cola at 2 a.m. whenever he wanted. It's really hard to decide which street to turn down and what to show you because this neighborhood is so beautiful. Hopefully you are just getting a, a taste of Georgetown and you'll come venture around either on your own with one of our audio tours or our self-guided tour or come with us on a guided tour. So this is the back and the side of the other Dodge house. This one was built initially by Francis Dodge. Uh, so these Dodges have no relation to the motor company. The elder Francis Dodge was a wealthy shipping mer merchant. Um, you can actually still see the Dodge warehouse down by the Potomac River here in Georgetown. His father, Francis Dodge Sr., had 11 children uh, and two of his sons built homes here in Georgetown really on Q Street, Magnolia Tree. So we saw Robert Dodge's house. This is Francis Jr. Now, actually both of the houses were built by the design team, Andrew Jackson Downing and Calvert Vaux. Eventually this home would be purchased by Henry Cook uh, he had some houses we'll see in a moment that were supposedly built by his children to keep them nearby. So as we walk along Q Street, there are going to be three sets of standalone houses that are kind of duplexes. These are kind of like mini mansions. They're all built by Henry Cook and they're known as Cook's Row. So the legend is uh, that he built these six houses uh, <laughs> for his 12 children to keep them nearby. There are four double villas and they kind of have alternating architectural styles. Cook was a banker, a railway entrepreneur, and he was appointed in 1871 by President Grant to be the first territorial governor of the District of Columbia. So these houses were completed in 1868.
so this kind of tan reddish brick house uh, is the home of Bob Woodward. He was a reporter for the Washington Post during the Watergate scandal that led to the resignation of President Nixon. So growing up, Woodward, Woodward's parents didn't want him to be a journalist, thinking that it wouldn't be a successful career. So across the river, there was a parking garage in Roslyn, Virginia. And that is where Woodward and fellow reporter Carl Bernstein met with an informant known as Deep Throat, which we now know was a FBI agent named Mark Felt. At the time, Woodward was not living in this house. He was living in DuPont Circle, another neighborhood here in DC, and he would communicate with Felt on times to meet with a secret code like he'd move a plant on the balcony to a different corner or he'd circle a certain page on the morning newspaper. So you, if you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, watch the movie All the President's Men or read the book uh, that was written by Bob Woodward all about this experience. So we're now getting a little bit more closer to the western half of Georgetown, where our historic Georgetown, our ghost of Georgetown, and our true crimes of Georgetown tour explore. So we're going to head south down 31st Street. If I were to go right up the hill, we would see sites like Tudor Place, Dumbarton Oaks, Oak Hill Cemetery, Evermay, all sites that we will visit on a future video. Another Kennedy house is just across the street at 1528, the very square brick one. So when Georgetown was founded, it was kind of a tobacco inspection port, so mostly down by the river, which we're going to visit on a future video. So the northernmost part of the town of George was N Street, what they called Gay Street. So almost everything that we've seen today has been O, P, and Q streets, so kind of all the, the suburbs of Georgetown, if you will.
I'll tell you what, it is a gorgeous day as you can see by the number of people. Thank y'all so much for walking around Georgetown with me. We have another great video coming up for you right now. As always, like, share, subscribe, and I'm going to leave you with this beautiful view of Georgetown.